Hello and welcome to Yak Wax Lips, the podcast. I'm your host Michael, your point and click adventurer, and we're here to talk all things adventure games, like your classics from Monkey Island and Broken Sword, through to modern gems like Unavowed and Whispers of the Machine. We're here for news, reviews and interviews with developers and fans alike. So get yourself comfortable and grab a grog right here on Yak Wax Lips, the podcast. Hello and welcome to Yak Wax Lips, the podcast. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer. And um, yes, thanks for joining me here today, the second episode. Now, if you are watching this on YouTube, please give it a subscribe and a like. Really appreciate it. And if you are listening to it on your podcast device listening thingy, iTunes or Google or whatever, hit subscribe because um, who doesn't love adventure games these days? So, today we have an amazing interview with Dave Gilbert of Wadjitai Games and we delve into how they started, what's going on now, what's going on in the future. We cover pretty much, you know, the majority of their games, including what's going on with Techno Babylon 2, the new game Old Skies, and uh, yeah, a sequel to Unavowed, loads and loads of things we discuss. However, before delving into that interview, I just want to cover a few things about what's been what has been uh, what has been going on in the adventure game world and what I've been up to. So I've just finished a couple of games. I have finally finished a game called The Hand of Glory from Madit Games, who are based out of Italy. Um, now this game came out in um, July, I think, end of June, beginning of July, and I've been doing it as a Let's Play on the YouTube channel. And uh, I, I had a good roll with it. I had a good 10, 12 episodes, 25 minutes each, and then I kind of, dip, you know, lost lost track a little bit because life takes over. That's you know, things happen. However, I did pick it up recently and I did finish it and it was it was well worth it, definitely. It's got a very much broken sword vibe, which they are going for. It is, however, only half a game. The game is so massive that instead of delaying it and delaying it and delaying it, they decided to um, split it into two. So it does end on somewhat of a cliffhanger uh, and the second part has been said that they're going to bring it out mid-November, so not, not far away. So I definitely go and check that out. Um, I'll leave links in the description for that. I will also have a full-on review of that uh, on YouTube coming very, very soon. And another game that I, I'm going to review on YouTube is Lancelot's Hangover, which comes out on October the 1st, and it's by, let me get this right, Jean-Baptiste de Clerfait. And being an Englishman, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that incorrectly. However, it's um, he's a Belgian Belgian fella, and he's done this all himself with uh, with the help of Kickstarter and a lot of backers. Um, I did play it. It took me about two and a half hours to get through. Um, it was really really fun. It was it was uh, yeah. They he takes the Mickey out of pretty much everything you name it, and it's 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 um he he kind of yeah pokes fun at it. If you like that kind of thing, then definitely pick it up. It's, it's well, well worth it. It's very similar to Joe Richardson's um, The Procession to Calvary. Well, I wouldn't say it's very similar, but it's um, the arts, the art style kind of genre. I don't know. It's, it's Joe Richardson's games are where he takes Renaissance paintings and cuts them all together. But this one doesn't do that at all. So I don't know why I said it, it's similar, but it the art style just looks similar. And the way it the way it, it plays is quite similar. The humour is um, very brash. It's a good game. It's a good game. I really enjoyed it. And again, I'll have a I'll have a review of that up very soon. Um, so what am I playing at the moment? I am playing a game called Welcome to Elk from T Triple Topping Games. Uh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure where they are based. Uh, you may have seen my in the uh, what was it the Indie Games Gamescom that was it Gamescom reviews. Uh, and this was one of the games that I played, one of the demos I played. And it was a fun demo. Uh, if you've seen if you've seen screenshots or playthroughs or whatever trailers, it's really, really bright and colourful, like really chunky, bright colours. It looks amazing. However, playing the demo, it was quite dark and grim. And so when I started to play it, I was a bit worried. However, it's really, really immersive. It's it's hooked me in. There are no puzzles. There are no puzzles to it throughout it whatever it is just walking around talking to people and it's a story but it's done really well and it's there's a lot of heartbreaking moments in it it's quite it is quite dark in places um, I've not finished it yet but so far I wouldn't say enjoying is the word 
but it's definitely an experience and so far so so good yeah keep an eye out for that and finally before we head off into uh, Dave Gilbert Land and Wadget Eye uh, I have started a new Patreon now if you don't know what Patreon is it's a way to support your favourite creators and if you're listening to this I presume I am one of them hopefully if not thanks for listening watching anyway whatever uh, so yeah you can chip in from three pound a month ten pound a month fifteen pound a month and in return for that you get extra perks so if you want to if you want to help me out um, the money goes towards my time because I spend about up to 25 hours a week on yak wax lips and it's not a, it's not a job in the slightest so I you know I do have another job so to put all that time and effort in it does take its toll so to get anything back would be amazing if you do sign up before um, October the 31st you also get a free game I will send you a free adventure game I'm not sure what yet but you'll find out uh, that's that is patreon and if you, if you want to join up for that it's just patreon.com forward slash yak wax slips right let's head on into the interview which is why you've tuned in let's face it it was an absolute delight to talk to Dave so please sit back and listen to Dave Gilbert of Watch Your Tie Games. Hi guys, Michael here from Yak Wax Slips, the podcast, and today I am joined by the founder of Watch Your Tie Games, the creator of modern gems like Unavowed and the Blackwell series, amongst many, many others. It is, of course, Mr. Dave Gilbert. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing good. Uh, sorry about the very Spartan background. I mentioned <laughs> before we recorded that I, I moved desks to the other side of the room, which means that all the stuff that used to be over here used to be over there, and so now it's like kind of a now blank it's like a mess yeah over there a so blank I thought, canvas. I could like move my camera. I can move myself. That no, doesn't work. I could I could turn the camera, but you can see more of my bed. That's not exciting. Anyway, hello. Yeah. Yes, glamorous, glamorous game developer life. <laughs> That's fine. Most <laughs> most people will be listening rather than watching anyway, because. Uh, yeah, I'd be listening in the car and stuff. That's what I do anyway. And <laughs> well, now, I, now I ruined it by describing stuff. And now they'll want to. Now they'll want to get on the video and see it. Exactly. So. Just imagine I beautiful. Screw vistas. that up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, Dave, you are um, in based in New York. I am right here in uh, in the middle of England. Um, how's it going over there? How's it? How's life in this crazy <laughs> lockdown world for you right now? Uh, well, we um, we spent um, about two and a half months upstate. Uh, just to get away from the city during the pandemic, during the really hot months, because you know we were stuck with a, a seven-year-old, um, and we can't go outside, so yeah. uh, at least not easily. And so we just wanted some outdoor space uh, where she could run out and play, and you know we wanted some outdoor space too. Uh, so we we were up there for about two and a half months. It was amazing. You know, view of the Hudson Mountains, hiking. It was great. So we're back now. Um, <laughs> Just in time for the weather to cool off. Uh, Eve, my our daughter Eve, she's uh, seven, as I said. She's starting homeschooling again. I'm starting to get back into working mode again. Uh, hence why I'm doing all these, you know, dev streams. I've been tweeting a lot more about my work than I used to. Yeah. Um, it was. Uh, I'm feeling like I'm not feeling better, but I'm feeling better. Like I'm in a much better mental place than I was like at the beginning of everything. Yeah. Um, progress this year has gone extremely slow because of everything that's going on. Uh, it's just sort of not left me in a good place to, to work properly. Yeah. But I'm kind of in a better place now. I'm trying to keep things a little um, more optimistic and uh, uh, positive for myself. So I can, you know, keep working and, you know, be for there for my family and not completely wreck my mental health. Mental health. I don't like kind of beyond the scope of what you asked. No, that's I'm absolutely fine. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, fine. Thank you. That's great. Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I should have just said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it must be difficult. I mean, I, I have young children as well and being locked down and they've, they've just left the house like two weeks ago and I have what is known as time. I've oh. never heard of it for quite a while. Um, what did yes, they leave? They left, left the house for school? Or? Yeah, for school. So instead of oh. like living with them for 24 hours a day, you know, they go to school for six, seven hours a day. So I, I'm at home and I managed to, to do things. Our schools um, aren't even, uh, I guess they're not even open yet. So. Yeah, so it's, it's all a bit of a, of a weird place. Um, mm. Anyway, talk about, talk about weird places. Wadgy Eye Games. <laughs> So, um, we could just, just talk about our kids for an hour. That's cool. Yeah, too. I mean, I'm good for that. I'm good for that. I'm sure our listeners will be fine. You yeah. know, at the end of it, we'll do a pop quiz on it. I'm sure mm-hmm. it'll be fine. Um, now, 
ideally, um, I really want to get into uh, what's coming up for you um, mm -hmm. over the next months, weeks, years. Um, but for those who don't know, um, Watch It Eye Games was, was created, uh, I think, in 2006. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. And um, what, was, what was the idea behind, like, why did you start Watch It Eye? Well, I've been doing um, point-and-click adventure games for uh, free, just as a fun hobby. I started that around 2001. Uh, basically, I was unemployed. I lived in the middle of New York, and it was September of 2001. Oh. So you kind of know what happened around yeah. that time. And uh, I was looking for just ways to get my mind off stuff. I discovered Adventure Game Studio, started making games for fun, and uh, I just sort of stuck with it. People seemed to like them, so I kept making them. And then about four years later, five years later, I decided I can't envision doing anything else. So yeah. I was again in between jobs, but at this time I had money saved up. And I'm like, well, it's now or never. So I decided to give it a try and um, sell um, a free word game that I had made. I just added some voice. I added voice acting and commentary, um, updated some of the animations and stuff like that, and just sold it just to kind of test the market to see if it was something I could do. Uh, people were very responsive to it. So I just sort of kept doing it. So yeah. it's kind of my way as a voice. I was like, well, it's either keep doing this or I have to get a real job. So <laughs> I'll keep doing this until I have to get a real job. And I'm, yeah, 14, I'm still years, doing that. 14 years later, just like, oh, yeah. see if it's almost a, 15, Jesus. Yeah, yeah 15 years. Almost, and almost. in those 15 years, you, like I said in the intro, you have released um, what I would call modern classic, you know, unavowed. Um, won awards across the board and um, obviously the Blackwell series is um, it's it's touching on like um, the classic LucasArts I mean it would fit quite easily into that kind of um, that kind of over but um, oh, thank you so much thank you I, that that means a lot thank you <laughs> um, so that if you haven't played those guys um, go and go and, um, and play them but yes like I said I am here because I asked you on because you said you tw started to tweet a lot and one of your tweets recently was <laughs> some screenshots it's working it's working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, connect the dots and then yes mm -hmm. and uh, and it is of um, a new game you are creating right now um, called old skies yes. so um, let's just delve in right at the start. Tell us every single plot point of Old Skies. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, but no, if you could delve in and just guys, give us, a, uh, mm -hmm. give us an, an overview of, of what the, if you can, of what, what the idea well, there is. I mean, the gist of it is uh, it's based on a, a game I did for a jam about a year and a half ago. There was the Adventure Game, Adventure Jam. Yeah, and I, I was kind of go. I, I was coming off of unavowed, um, and I gave a, a talk about this at the last Adventure X, uh, which would be happening in a month if it wasn't for the pandemic. But um, where I had finished unavowed, and I kind of was in this weird space where I was coming off like the the biggest game of my career, and it's like, how do I top this? And it was kind of a, a lot of paralysis there, and um, kind of burden of expectations, which. It's so elitist, but it was definitely there. Um, so I entered this jam anonymously. I was going to make a little game and just just for the fun of it and with no expectations, just anonymously. And if people, if it, if the game sucks and people hate it, no one will know it was me. So mm -hmm. I didn't, uh, I, I just entered this jam with no expectations. And people liked the game. It didn't like set the jam on fire, but people liked it. And I, I had this, I, the idea I came up with was this little mini time travel story. And um, it was about this woman who came uh, from the future to find this fugitive. Very simple. It takes maybe five minutes top, tops to play. But I had so much fun making it. Uh, I decided um, maybe I could turn this into a full game. And that's what I've been doing. Um, it took a while. Uh, like at first I, I was doing an unavowed sequel, which I think there was a greater demand for. But to be honest, my heart wasn't in it. Right. Um, I think because the, the the unavowed was such a, I loved it, but it was such a hard game to make that I, my brain was rebelling against it, and I was a few months into that when I just took a day and just on a whim, I'm like, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna start designing, plotting out an old sky story. That's oh. what I had called the jam game, and see where it gets me. Just I'm gonna take a day and I'm gonna do it, and I designed like a third of the game in like one afternoon. Wow. So it seemed to be that this is where the muse was taking me. Yeah. And I decided, well, you know, I haven't announced an unavowed sequel. I've made no official announcement. So whatever, we're dropping that and we're doing this instead because I was getting nowhere with it. And then I started working on that back in like 
mid-January. And then um, the pandemic happened and things just all got blew, blown up. Yeah. Uh, as, but anyway, the, the story, I, I'm going off on tangents. I apologize. <laughs> I um, like tangents. Go basically, it's a time travel way. story. Right. Um, and it's basically about, I'm trying to find a, like with every game I do, I always try to find a way to compress. Like people say, what's this game about? And I find a way to compress it yeah. in like a sentence or two. And I have yet to actually do that with Old Skies. So apologies if this sounds a little muddled. Um, uh, yeah, I'm great at this, aren't I? Uh, basically, it's a time travel story where um, time basically breaks. And um, you have to go to various eras of history, a bit of New York history, because that's what I do. Yeah. And you have to kind of like find out what went wrong with time. And you have to fix it. And um, it all centers around this one family that you kind of follow through various eras and generations. And, um, and the kind of, uh, you kind of uncover this big mystery surrounding that family. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's the gist of it. Not quite as sexy as it should be. I need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on my p elevator pitch. Yeah. But that's basically the gist of it. <laughs> Excellent. So um, I saw the, um, I have not played, but I saw the demo that you did mm -hmm. for, the, uh, for the game jam. That was in 3D on Unity, I mm -hmm. do believe. Was there any thought that that is the way you're going to go for, for your full on game. Yeah. So. That originally I thought like I had been, Ben and I had been, Ben being my, my business partner slash artist yeah. guy. Um, we had been uh, working on uh, Techno Babylon, the Techno Babylon sequel for on and off for about it. I've been working on it, helping him out on and off for like a year. And Ben had been working on it also for a year. And so I, I was like kind of tinkering with three, 3d tools and um i when i made that jam game i decided to take those tools and see if i could make a little game and i did and so uh, hubristically i thought well i could probably expand this to making a full commercial game i made this little dinky thing so naturally i can make a full game of course yeah. so it was a little hubristic and so we were working on it I, I, we were using the system called uma which kind of is a is a way to generate um, 3D characters very quickly. And we thought, I, I used it for the jam game. And I thought, well, you know, maybe if a real artist gets a hold of this, he could do something better with it. Yeah. And so we played around with it for like two months. And um, it, it, we just were miserable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was trying to, we were trying to work in this new paradigm, 3D and Unity. And we hated every step of it. Like, yeah. At one point, you know, like Ben was coming. Ben is such the nicest, easygoing guy, and he was getting frustrated. And <laughs> he's like, this is so hard. I'm like, oh, imagine once we get a workflow going, like it'll be easier. And I, I'm like, I'm figuring this out myself. You know, I, I got a thousand compilation errors this morning. And Ben is like, I spent two weeks making eyebrows. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, Painful. And I, like, I, I just, and every time like a bug happened, like I tried to, like I had to do research to try to figure out why, like the yeah. simplest things I could normally do in Adventure Game Studio suddenly became impossible. Like I had to spend days, weeks researching why yeah. it happened. And that just always would lead to other things I didn't know. And there was, I thought I knew a lot. I didn't, we didn't know anything. <laughs> and so one day, I don't know, I think it was probably Ben, might've been me. It was just like, are, are you enjoying this? It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. You want to go back to 2D? Yes. Oh, wow. uh, and so that's what we did. And, and, yeah. and I'm glad we figured that out with, we spent two months and I think that was a good, by the end of that two months, Yeah. at first it was cool. We're like doing new things. Yeah. We're learning new stuff. Brain's going. This is great. And then after two months, we're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like we need to stop before we get burnt out yeah. and we destroy both of us ourselves. So yeah. Um, yeah, we decided to switch to 2D, which we did. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Um, so sticking on the, um, on the theme of, of Ben and the art, um, the screenshots that you posted for Old Skies don't have that, um, the wadget eye like look essentially it's, it's mm -hmm. gone, it's, def it's gone kind of more hand drawn. Was that like, whose decision was that? Uh, that was Ben's, actually. Um, I don't want to put the blame on him if it sucks. But, um, <laughs> like, originally we thought, like, oh, like, we should go um, – uh, Ben was working on Nighthawks, which was, like, 4K. You know, it was, yeah. like, ultra high resolution. And he, he got very familiar with doing art in that style. And suddenly he felt that even, like, the, the higher res that we did for Unavowed was, like, too limiting. Um, and so he's like, could, I, could we try doing, like, you know, 1080p, 1080 by 19, uh, 1920? 
Yeah. Actually, that's the other way. And he did some research. This was back when uh, he did some research on like how to on a on a workflow that he could um, uh, do to make it a little easier. He got some different softwares. I don't know what I don't know what it is. I think it's yeah. Sprite he uses. Um, he started uh, animating in three D because he he knew how to do that. And then like getting a three um, D model and then drawing over it. Um, yeah. I think that's what he did at first. I don't think he does that anymore. Yeah, he just he just wanted to try it, and I was happy to let him. Yeah. Because yeah, why not? Let's do something are new. You, are and, you sticking with that? Because I mean, I've seen a few previous shots that you put up on Discord um, of some different characters. I mean, is it is it still an evolution there, or are you set on the idea that those characters are those are the way they they're not final? Now? They're not final, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Um, but they, we are going with that style. Yeah. That kind of like more colorful high definition you know kind of like miyazaki-esque yeah exactly i was going to say that myself it's um i put the screenshots up on the um yak quack slips facebook and i've had hundreds of people say I saw. thank you and thank it's you. uh yeah 99 percent of them are positive there's always gonna be that one percent who are yeah. a little you know there, there was one uh, there was one comment um where it's like yeah I, I i get it where someone looked at it and said yeah i don't know what this game is and that's yeah. sort of the problem with the premise like it's a time travel game so there's no like particular you know like that's sort of like and ben makes fun of me that i think about this so much because <laughs> you know like it is a business i'm always thinking about branding like yeah. okay you have unavowed it's an urban fantasy there's certain tropes associated with you know urban fantasy so we had like the the blood red skies you know everything is shadowy um or even like you know shard light and we had that like orange kind of blasted landscape or yeah. um you know we with our techno babylon you know every cyberpunk anime ever ever existed we have tons of like influence to pull from where you where you can create something and you instantly know okay that's what kind of story this is but yeah. there's no special tone or style or, or visual tropes that go with time travel story yeah and that's going to be a, a challenge in terms of branding you know but <laughs> it seems silly to think about that um yeah but with the fact that one person on your on that uh, Facebook thread mentioned that, I'm like, damn it, yeah, I know that's <laughs> gonna be a problem. Like I've been thinking yeah. about that. Like, how do I brand this? Because every screenshot, you know, there's gonna be a different era, different. You know, she's gonna be wearing a different outfit. Yeah. Um, so there's no like, you know, she's like in the 20s, or she's in the 1860s, or she's in the 1980s. Like they're all gonna look different. Yeah. So how do you yeah. make it consistent? And that was my challenge for Ben. Um, and so he came up with this like. Studio Ghibli esque Miyazaki kind of, you know, nostalgic feeling mm. um, palette and style, which I think really works. It really works for the game. It, yeah. It's different. And admittedly, when I first saw it, my mind rebelled against it because <laughs> I'm so used to like the pixely style. Yeah. And like, I'm just thinking, is this crazy? Like, this is so different. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I was actually kind of scared when I see it. Yeah. But now I've grown to love it because it's, it's like, it's something new and it's different and it's, and I'm, I'm relying on, you know, him to really drive the art style of the game. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and the atmosphere and all that. So I'm, I'm kind of letting that go. And it's actually very freeing just to kind of let Ben, you know, take the lead on, on that art stuff. Yeah. And I mean, he always does, but he always has a lot more direction from me. And this time he does not have that direction from me. Yeah. Uh, so, um, now he's kind of like making it his own, you know? Yeah. And it's funny because whenever he hears me talk about that, he laughs. He's like, I know what it's going to look like. It's going to look like a Ben Chandler game. Yeah. It's gonna look like, the art's going to look like Ben Chandler art. I'm yeah. like, you're right. You know, yeah, go for it. You know, <laughs> make it. So uh, I'm, I'm putting my trust in, in that, yeah. trusting the process as it were. And it's, it's different, but I like it. Yeah. And um, it's a, it's, I think it's an interesting step forward since we couldn't, we, we were going to take a step forward with 3D. We decided not to do that. So now we're stepping out of our comfort zone in a different way. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm for it. Because yeah. it's, it's refreshing to, yeah. to look at the screenshots and it just looks so different. It does. It's great. I mean, there's only four that I've, that I've seen that you put up on Twitter, but they are yeah. fantastic. Um, what I wanted to ask about the, um, the gameplay aspect is Unavowed okay. is, you know, you can pick your clan, you know, you can, you can pick who you want to be. And with the characters, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that term with the characters on old skies. Um, there are current, uh, I think there was three, maybe four characters that we've seen is, can you do that on this one? Or is it just like a one woman show as it is? It's a one woman show. And right. there's a one brief prologue where you play somebody else. Right. Um, it, it's yeah. I, I, 
it's funny because I'm like, yeah, Unavowed was so complicated. I'm going to do something more simple. And then I make this time travel story with all these like time travel puzzles that I'm like, oh my God, this, like, this is going to drive me crazy. Yeah. Uh, no one ever said I was smart. So, um, yeah, you play one character uh, in different time periods. You know, she travels to different time periods and um, the puzzles involve time travel. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> so that's, that's basically the gist of it. Cool. Um, now, you did mention Nighthawks there, and you, as well as making your own games, you publish some fantastic games as well and help along the way. It's like you've mentioned, you know, you've mentioned um, Shardlight, and there's um, uh, Techno Babylon, and Gemini Ru, and, you know, there's Primordia. Um, when, you, when a project comes to you, like, how mm -hmm. much input do you have? Do you, like, get your hands dirty and get in there? Because, I mean, you've yeah. got wadgy eye fingerprints over all of them. It's not just like your name at the top of the, of the, of the cover or whatever, and that's it. I mean, how, how involved are you? And, and especially like going on to that, Nighthawks <laughs> is, <laughs> Nighthawks is kind of, um, it's not a point and click adventure game. It's, it's something different. Yeah. How did that come across your desk? I get, I don't know whether you chose it or, or how, how it went. Yeah. And, and uh, you've also got future games coming, mm -hmm. uh, Strange Land. Uh, I'm not sure about if Techno Babylon 2 is going to happen. I mean, how are you I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I know James is going through a lot. So yeah. I, I'm not pressuring him. Yeah. Basically, I told him to come back to me when he feels he's ready. And yeah. I'll go from there. Okay. Um, but in terms but, of like Nighthawks, I mean, that's so different from what I game, what we expect from you, so. got from you. So, yeah. I mean, how did that? Yes. Okay. So with any game that I, I got into publishing, basically, because when I first started, um, I kind of realized very quickly that these games take a long time to make. And it was my, I wanted it to be my sole source of income. I didn't want to have to get a real job. Yeah. So I thought, well, if one of these games is a complete, you know, crater bomb, uh, then I'm, I'm done. Like I am, I will not be able to come back from that because yeah. they take so long to make. And then back then I was make. it's funny. I'm like, yeah, it takes a year to make a game. That's too long. <laughs> and now I'm like a year. I wish games only took a year, but uh, I thought that by publishing other games, I would kind of spread out that risk yeah um which which does happen you know but now mostly it's so what would happen is i would sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to how i approach publishing sometimes folks approach me and i just happen to be in like in the right space to take on something new yeah uh, or i approach them uh or somewhere in between um i know with primordia i saw the art and i'm like i need to talk to these people this, this game looks amazing uh resonance uh, i was aware of vince through the um you know the ags forums yeah. and we were talking about it uh talking and he said how you know he, he's been working on it for five years he's only like 20 percent done i'm like well maybe we can work this out you know maybe we can work together here yeah and we we worked out a deal and we managed to get the game done um, yeah, so it, it, it depends. Like there's, you know, um, there's no rhyme or reason to how it works. Yeah. And I am not hands-off most of the time. Hmm. Um, I, because uh, my name, like, I'm like a, almost a one-man show, not quite back then. I certainly was. It was mostly me, occasionally my wife um, and some, uh, you know, freelancers that I would hire. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, like it was my name, like on the box, as it were. Yeah. And I don't want something I don't like. So usually I will be very hands-on. I will ins I will insist on changes, make suggestions, give a lot of feedback. I usually handle stuff like the voice acting and QA, and um, I usually will uh, help get music if that's not something they can do themselves. And when it's done, I kind of like take care of it. Like I yeah. um, handle the, the the PR, the marketing, the, the sales, and you know, and they just get the money in the end so they don't right. have to worry about any of that stuff yeah. um so that's that's worked out pretty well not just financially but i, I mean i at, at the beginning i was kind of hubristic like oh i'm doing them the favor but no they're also doing me a favor because <laughs> i'm working with some amazing developers i have learned like i have a front row seat to just le learn from really great creative developers and um we've also like and i also get like this um the best of both worlds where you know, I can, if I'm working on my own thing for years and I'm sick of it by the end and I'm burnt out and stressed out, it's kind of nice to help someone else bring their vision to life. Yeah. And so they can do the creative thinking and I can <laughs> be like the, the outside observer saying, you know, no, maybe you should, you're kind of improving it and tinkering with it. Cause I would never say I, I know precisely what makes a game good, but I've made plenty of mistakes that I know what makes games bad. Yeah. Nighthawk specifically, it's I I like I, I'm good friends with Richard Cobbett. We hang out every time I visit the UK, 
uh, at various events and stuff. We chat online all the time. I really admire his writing. Um, I just think he, he's, he's got the most interesting ideas about what goes into games. Like he's just so smart and clever and he just breathes like clever writing. He just yeah. is amazing. And so he had this idea and um, at first he's like, yeah, I'd like to go into Kickstarter and, and, you know, get the money to make it and, you know, pay, pay Ben to do the art, you know, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, well, I, I love that idea, but I'm just coming off of Unavowed. This was like, you know, mid 2018. Yeah. I'm not really going to have the energy to like do a Kickstarter campaign. And he's like, that's fine. I'll handle it. I just need, I just want to use like your brand name. Right. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know? And, um, and so then the next thing I know, like it actually, uh, successful yeah. <laughs> so we actually had to we had to make the game and i i was very clear with richard i'm like i get i i'm really getting the much better end of this deal <laughs> because you know he's paying like my staff to work on the game yeah uh so i'm basically my fan financial investment is not much yeah and at the end of it i i still get money from it at the oh, end and, yeah. and and if he's fine with that i'm fine with that you know awesome because yeah. he just wants to do the, he just wants to make a game and yeah it's all writing and it's all it's so clever like everything like i i look at his i looked at his design and all of his character bios and he has everything planned out and i'm look, reading this and i'm like i could never do this this is incredible <laughs> what you made here yeah. and i it's like you said it's not traditionally the type of thing we do yeah. Um, it's more like Sunless Sea um, than, you know, Gabriel Knight or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it's so good. It's just amazing. Yeah. And I am really looking forward to playing more. And I, I, this is a game I don't I, – I said I was ha more hands-on. Yeah. This game I'm not really that hands-on because Richard knows what he's – he's done this before. Yeah. And also I've never – I'm not familiar with this kind of game. So he's – and but he is. He worked on Sunless Sea. He worked on Sunless Skies. You know, he knows this kind of game. I don't. Yeah. So I'm just trusting him. You know, all, all, all I'm doing is giving him the brand yeah. and my artist, <laughs> which <laughs> he's paying for. So, um, which which is fine. I'm happy with that. Great uh, so you know, but like I I am I'm really happy to work with him because I adore the I adore the man. Yeah. And so um, I'm willing to take a risk on when when there's sometimes I can take a risk on something. And yeah. there's a few games in my, in my catalog where it's like, well, I'm doing financially okay. I can take a risk on something since like my, my personal and financial investment in this isn't very much. So why not? That was Primordia. Yeah. Um, we were doing 2012 was a great year. So we're like, yeah, I can take it. This is weird, but all right, let's take a risk on this. Uh, the new guys was another one. I'm like, all right, you know, wrestling. I, I love the game, but wrestling, mm -hmm. I don't know, but you know what? My investment in this is minimal. Let's do it. Um, and Nighthawks was similar. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a Golden Wake was another one. Golden Wake was another one where I'm like, real estate agent in the 20s? Well, you know, all right, let's go for it. Why not? Um, my financial and, and personal investment was, was small. So I was, I was happy to give it, a, give it a go. Why not? What do I have to lose? Um, not that much, really. So I was willing to take risks on those things. Yeah. Um, like in, in 2017, I, was, I, I had some projects going on where – I, I, the, financially things weren't so good. <laughs> and so it's like, I had to say no to a lot of things and like cancel a few things. And, um, I, I felt really bad about that, but I really yeah. just needed to focus on my own stuff and get my own stuff out. Yeah. So I could take risks again and now I can take risks again. Yeah. It's, it's nice that I can do that. Excellent. Um, now on your slate coming up, there is, um, Strange Land from the guys who did Prime Audio, um, mm -hmm. which I think is quarter one, 2021, I think. Yeah, I read somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a release date for Nighthawks at all? Is that, no, that's no, pretty... no, we don't. Okay. No, no. We, and, we assume next, we're going to say next year. Yeah, everything's um, a bit up in the air right now. <laughs> I mean, the pandemic just threw everything out of the, yeah. uh, you know, out of whack. I know Richard yeah. hurt his arm, so it was hard for him to type. Um, and you know, just in general, we've all been working slow. Yeah. Because... Now, again, going back to um to old skies. Um, yeah. how how far are you along in the development? Is the story set, or have you still got pieces to to fill in? And... I have a lot of pieces to fill in. It's kind of like I know where it's going to end. Yeah. And I'm designing it piece by piece. Uh, I find I work better that way. Um, yeah. I'm designing it piece by piece, and then 
prototyping it really fast. I don't know if you saw the jams, not the jams, the dev streams that I did, but that's just me prototyping it. I just want to make sure puzzle and gameplay wise that it's fun. Yeah. I, know I, can, I know I can do the narrative stuff. I'm pretty sure I can do the narrative stuff. Um, so I, so I want to focus on my weaker strengths, which right. is the puzzles. I've always been bad at puzzles. And I think when you have a time travel game like this, the draw of it is being able to do time travel puzzles like that. So yeah. I want to make sure those are fun and they don't completely break my brain um, <laughs> before I move forward. So um, yeah. I, I know like the story beats. I know the individual moments, which basically are story beats. <laughs> I know how it's going to end. I just don't quite. So I have the destination, but not a roadmap, if that makes right. any sense. Yeah. Know where I'm going, not quite sure how to get there. Yeah. And the, but that, that's how I do every single game. Like, Unavowed, I had no idea how it was going to end. Really? Until I was like midway. Yeah. Like, the big twist in the game just came to me in the middle of the game. <laughs> and, you know, and it just slotted in thrown at, so naturally. And people think, oh, wow, you planned this from the beginning. No, I didn't. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. I genuinely just, thought, like, yeah, you know, you have everything mapped out exactly. And yeah. Sometimes things just work out Fantastic. really well. Yeah. Uh, Epif the Blackwell Epiphany ended completely differently in my original design completely wow. and then i just changed it midway through i'm like this works better i'm gonna do this <laughs> and um i'm i'm very loose about the way yeah. i design okay so that's um release date unknown as is a uh, nighthawk so yeah strange lands uh, up next i guess for you for you um Land, yes uh, now just just um just kind of to finish a little bit um now you've got all these games you also do voice um uh, directing uh, you did you've done some on um whispers of a machine i think was um was yep i did you. the voice acting for um clifftop stuff whispers yeah. of a machine and uh, rain. Did you do any on rain. yeah fantastic game i love that um do, uh, have you got any more of that in the pipeline at all yeah yeah um i'm gonna be doing uh the voice acting for um the cole's new game um the hero uh, summer days at hero you hero, yeah, yeah. The voice acting for them uh aside from that uh there's nothing else that i'm yeah. no other no other non wajedi games that i'm doing yeah. voiceover for i'm doing yeah. i mean obviously uh strange land i'm going to be doing voiceover for that soonish yeah. um i'm just waiting for them to send me an audition script and i'm ready to go yeah. uh so yeah whenever they do that uh yeah we're going to be doing that next and then probably nighthawks after that um and then hopefully old skies at some point <laughs> <laughs> yeah um or if another game comes along. I love working with voice actors so much. Yeah. It is my favorite thing in the world to do. Oh, really? And it's almost like when I get to the point in my own games where I can have voice acting or I can work with voice actors, it's like a reward for getting that far. <laughs> I just have worked with um, a whole bunch of amazing voice actors, some of whom have gone on to just do amazing things, you know, uh, you know, um, Shelly Shinoy ended up working in, you know, uh, she was a lead character, not player character, but a lead character in um, uh, a Telltale series. Uh, she's just done something, she's just amazing. Yeah. Um, I think Sarah Male is now like working with Jennifer Hale in LA. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, some of these actors I've worked with have just like gone on to do amazing things. And I'm, yeah. I'm so proud of them. <laughs> <laughs> sad because, uh, sad also because I can't work with them anymore. But yeah, yeah. Um, you're too good at your job. Like if I had to give up game development, I would want to be a voiceover uh, director because I love it. Yeah. I love it. Every minute of it, I love it. Well, like all, all the games that you have voice directed, yeah. um, they really add to the character thank you it's something i feel very strongly about and I, i'm well aware of what these kind of games are and there's a, a limit to like how far you can take the voice acting and at least in terms of like quality or fidelity or, or whatever um like if, if we were using like if we, we did do a 3d game and it we needed like and you could see the close-ups and the mouths move and we would probably i would probably hire a real director yeah like because you need a, that extra fidelity to make it right yeah but for but for what i do like my level is perfectly acceptable and like i really rely on the actors like i i find that the more the less work i do and the more i rely on the actors the better the results and yeah. it's just let's have fun and let's you know let's play with this and let's you know we're, we take it seriously but most for the most part it's fun yeah and that comes through that just love of doing it comes through Fantastic. and I, I i just it's a joy from start to finish i just love it 
Excellent. Uh, now, one final question to uh, to wrap up, if that's all right with you. Um, yeah. What is on um, your computer at the minute? What what games? Not what non Wadjidai games are are you playing or have you played recently? Oh well, um, I was recently. Uh, it was Megan Fox on Twitter, not the actress Megan Fox. <laughs> uh, Megan Fox of Glass Bottom Games. Megan all right. Fox. It'd be awesome if I if Megan Fox if I <laughs> recommended this on Twitter. Um, she was talking about Greedfall, and I remember uh, when it came out, it was kind of like, oh, it's this really like controversial story about colonialism, and we don't, no, no let's not touch that one. Yeah. But she was raving about it. I'm like, I'm going to try this out, because she said it was like a, a mid-era Bioware game that, you know, um, uh, it, was, it was like the mid-era Bioware game that didn't exist, and I've been playing it. And I'm really enjoying the crap out of it. It's yeah. um, it does feel like a 2007 era Bioware game, it wow. um, with a lower budget, but it's a lot of fun. And yeah. um, it's got some interesting characters, an interesting setting. Um, you know, it's kind of clunky because it was kind of made on a, a made really made on a budget. But yeah, I'm liking it a lot. <laughs> I know I heard of that one, but I'll um I will be sure to check that out. And uh, all the links to all the games I'll put in the show notes and uh, YouTube notes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so if people want to find out about Wadget Eye Games and um and you, Dave, and where's the best place to go? I mean, I I've recently joined your Discord and you're pretty active over there. Um, yeah, so yeah. Where, where um, else can can the people find you? I'm on Twitter, Wadget Eye Games with a J, uh, and I'm also on Facebook and i'm on discord and those are the main three places to find me yeah um i used to have a forum but it got so attacked by spam bots i got rid of it um but yeah you twitter uh you could always reach me on twitter like i will yeah. always get twitter notifications and yeah excellent uh well hopefully i will catch up with you um when old skies is nearing completion or out um <sighs> whenever that way it may be um <laughs> Asking but, a developer at the beginning of a project, so when is this coming out? <laughs> is this the surest way to give them a 10,000 yard stare? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a long time. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time, Dave. And, um, and, My and, pleasure. And for, and for Sorry your... if I kind of used 20 words where five would do. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love that. I, I, um, the more information that you give, whether you go on a, a tangent that's 10 miles wide, it, it's, it really... <laughs> It really fleshes out. Like, I never do that at all. Never, <laughs> never do that. Like I, I, I could listen to um, people talk about games um, for a very, very long time. So thank okay. you very much for, for this hour thank or so. You for, thank had. you for having me. This was fun. So there is a the news from Wajisai Games. Strange Land's coming up next. And you've got uh, Nighthawks and Old Skies and those, those on the cards. It's um it's exciting times. If um if you do do you like the look of Old Skies? It's definitely a departure from Wadjetai Games. If um if you didn't watch this on YouTube, uh, then after you've listened to it, go and watch it on YouTube and you'll see you'll see the images. Alternatively, come to my Twitter and Instagram and they're all on there. Um, it is definitely a a um a Ghibli kind of look, and I I really really like it, and I'm looking forward to see where this goes. Um, leave a comment below and let me know if you are excited about that and what other games you are playing or excited about and what other games that you want me to investigate because I'm always up for looking for new adventure games whether it's whether it's classics that I've missed I mean between you and me I've never played Gabriel Knight don't tell anyone else Shh. but yes there's 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 many hundreds dozens millions to play uh, yeah, and like I said at the start, if you do really like Yak Quack Slips and what I do in the adventure game genre, head over to Patreon and uh, become a patron of mine because there's loads of cool things that you get in return. Anyway, until next time, I plan on doing these podcasts fortnightly on a Tuesday. We'll see. Until next time, give it a like, give it a subscribe, give it a wave, I don't know. Have a good afternoon, evening, morning. Take care.